Hey everybody, I'm going to go ahead and do a lightning round of how to use DOS Grain Helper with uh, inside of Nuke Indie. Now it's important to note that there will be another demonstration for using Nuke non-commercial for those of you that are students that are learning. Uh, but if you've paid your dues and you have Nuke uh, Indie, we found that the uh, Blink script does work, but we still have uh, parts of a script that actually has to still use DOS Grain Helper. Uh, it was developed by Magnio. So we're going to go ahead and go through that. So as you can see here, I have a very simple setup as we've demonstrated before in previous uh, demonstrations of DOS Grain. I'll have a link it below if you want to know the basic DOS Grain, if you just have regular Nuke. But you can see here I have uh, footage of my friend here on a green screen. Uh, I used the Need video and I created a denoise version. So here's the original footage, here's the denoise. Let's see if you can kind of spot the spot the grain mover. It's not a lot of grain in this footage. It was shot on some old school uh, camera. Anyway, uh, with that said, we have the original. We have a comp. So the comp is simply a masked off, uh, you know, key mix of some checkerboard just to show you the CG element or any kind of paintwork. Um, obviously, you don't want to have any uh, regraining of areas that are not uh, done or affected in CG, so to speak. So if, there's n if they're not a composited element or a tampered with element in your shot, the producers of the show usually will want you to just leave the original grain there and just have the masked off grain, which we're going to demonstrate here. So basically I have a mask, and then I have the uh, uh, denoised footage. So obviously we comped on the denoise footage for the composite. So this is a compositing of no grain uh, backplate with no grain uh, CG element. Okay. So again, this is a lot simpler uh, than using any sort of Voronoi, uh, pre-rendered Voronoi, which you're going to have to do for the non-commercial version, which I'll do another demonstration of that. But I want to make this a lightning round. So again, plate. We take the plate, which is the original. We take the comp, which is the uh, basically denoise plate with the th uh, element, a CG element put on. We got the degrain plate. And then we have the mask input, which we're going to put right here, which is going to be the master of only where the CG is. So you have to plug in the uh, DOS screen helper. Okay. Now, initially, before you even start initializing this, if you go to the DOS screen itself, uh, you can start setting up such things as the number of frames you want to do, the sample counts, and so forth, and kind of get that get that ball rolling. You could also uh, come over here to the replace and turn on active, and choose the area that you probably want to sample. So I'm going to sample this like dark area up here, like that. So I'm going to have it kind of ready to go. I'll just deactivate that for now. So then I just go to the DOS screen, and here is the steps. So step one, click here, check inputs. Now, step 1B is going to replace the Voronoi uh, that is a Blink script inside of uh, DOS Grain with, uh, un with the substitution of an input. But we have found that the, a Blink script to do that works fine. So we don't have to replace that or basically pull it out and replace it. So we're going to jump because we're in Nuke Indie and not Nuke Non Commercial to step 2 for frame list, multi frame setup, sample count, uh, sample ranges, sorry and let it sample and then sample grain as we said before we have to break things things up in less than 10 uh, lines of code or whatever uh, 10 processes uh, so it's do it's basically just kick-starting jump-starting DOS grain uh, 10 sort of like uh, instructions at a time uh, and just kind of recording their information here and this information is used to propagate down so now that we've done that, we do not, we no longer need, we don't need this anymore. And if I go to the DOS screen, uh, let's go ahead and jump in and take a look. We have a fully functional now DOS screen. So everything should be working just fine here. So again, you can go see the normalized grain. This is what's been sampled. Uh, again, if I come over here to replace and hit active, now it's it's cloning that specific area. So again, you want to choose an area that's like you know there's there's not a lot of heavy uh, frequency data so you don't want to put it on his face or something because you might get kind of weird noisy areas where the hand was or areas of heavy contrast so i kind of threw it right there and everything works overlay cell pattern works so you can see your cell pattern you can come into your edge concealer you could put this to like one you could change up the amplitude to break that up if you wish uh, you could set this to 20 20 to 40 is a good number 
Uh, 30 is probably a good good uh, guess if you wish. Um, I'm going to go with like 35 for mine. And the bigger that you have this, the more it, it cologne stamps that little square area into these little circles. So if you want to have more variety of uh, the f little the details itself, you can kind of go like this and you'll be good to go. So you can choose whatever you want. Um, now with that said, again, all this works perfectly fine. So we can come in here now and you can see if we could do the adaptive green. Go ahead and turn off the overlay here. This is the adaptive green and we're going to go ahead and now we can choose to choose that input. So um, I have it set to active and I'm going to turn on replace mask. Okay, so now it's only replacing the CG. Uh, that it's it's now giving us a nice cool transition here from the regular grain. I'll kind of bring this up. You can kind of see it into the the the, the uh, area that's kind of like the synthetic grain. So this is the original grain, and again we know that by coming in here and taking this and turning it off and on. So just be aware of that. So make sure that's enacted so you can see if I go yeah, again I could use like a difference node if I really want to make you know you could use there's other better QC tools but. You could do the original versus the DOS grain. And you should see, if we take a look here. So let's just make sure we got this right. And I might want to set this back to my regrain comp. There you go. So if I do a difference mat, take a look at the alpha, you can see that the only difference, these are perfectly black uh, pixels out here, meaning there is no difference. And the only alterations are right here. And again, if you have active off, uh, I'm sorry, not active off with the mask off. You're synthetically creating grain uh, everywhere. Okay, so it's new grain. Yes, it matches with the you know the size and the intensities and so forth of that. And don't forget also to come in here. I'll go ahead and turn this back on. Don't forget also to come in here and adjust your curves. So again, you can come to your analyze, hit F, and of course you want to be on a incline uh, so you can keep going up. You could also take, uh, you know, you could back it up till like right about here, grab these three points after linear so that you're constantly going up and you've kind of got your curves in there. So again, you can kind of take a look. If I take a look at the original versus the DOS grain, we have that grain that in incorporates properly through the f uh, faded areas into the thing. And if we go ahead and just play this, okay. And again, you can see this if you're trying to like diagnose this, you can see this by going into your adaptive grain and hitting, you know, like, kind of like just moving through and seeing that, you know, everything is working properly. So that's it, folks. Uh, again, uh, I will make another demonstration for new non-commercial soon. Uh, uh, Purdue just started right now, <laughs> so I have to zip off the classes. It's our first day back, uh, so hopefully I'll eventually get a Nuke Not Commercial version, which involves uh, some of the tools that Magno has provided, such as uh, Voronoise and so forth, to deal with that. And I think that'll be beneficial, too, to those that are still learning Nuke um, and just trying to get used to it and just understanding the protocol workflow of using probably the most regrained option, which is DOS grain. Again, thanks to Fabian as well. So thanks all, and hopefully this will help you guys out.